Afternoon, everybody. We're going to commence with the last session of MIT Bitcoin Expo 2020, Building the Stack. We're starting off with presentations from the hackathon. And, I, and with me is Akshit, the hackathon chair. Well, hello, everybody. Thanks for coming in. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, we actually had a hackathon going on, a 24-hour hackathon in parallel with uh, a grand prize of $4,000 and four track prizes, uh, $2,500 each. Uh, right now, we're going to have all the winners uh, present, uh, and I'm going to introduce them one by one. But before that, I want to thank all our gold sponsors, Saya, Nervos, and Cello who, on top of being our grand sponsors, also had their own individual sponsor prizes. And uh, yep, a great round of applause for them. <laughs> also, one more note, I want to thank Christine also, who's my co-chair, who's been working on it a couple of months, and it's been great. Thank you. Awesome. So let's invite Sky Pages, who won the grand prize and uh, the Sire prize. All right. Uh, I'm Ian McJohn. This is Kevin Carlson and Sebastian Mendez. And we're going to talk a little bit about Sky Pages, a new way to host your website in a decentralized manner. Now, when we were starting out for this hackathon, one of the things we could quickly discovered was the Skynet API. Skynet allows you to host files on the internet in a decentralized manner. Nobody can mess with them. Nobody can take them down. And then you can access them from almost any web browser. Now, one of the things we expected to see from this was decentralized files that can be viewed in a web browser, some way to put a web page on it. We looked and looked, but we couldn't find any existing applications that would take your website and make it decentralized. That is, until now. Introducing Sky Pages. Sky Pages is an interface to handle this upload process. It can import if you have a zip file from your existing website, or if you put it on something like GitHub Pages, it can just pull the website directly off of the site. And then it outputs a Sky Link, which is a 46 byte link to the location on the blockchain. And then using one of the Skynet web portals, you can access your decentralized website on Sia Sky, Sia CDN, or something else just from your main web browser. So the way that this works is uh, we actually don't need any backend JS to do this. Uh, thanks to GitHub Pages and Sia Sky both having access control allow origin headers, we can download from any website any GitHub page and then upload from any website the, uh, to Sia Sky. So essentially what we do is we scrape whatever given GitHub pages you have and convert it into a virtual zip file. Or if you upload a zip, we have an actual zip file. Uh, either way, it goes to JS zip, and then the zip is then extracted, and files are uploaded individually. So all the resources, all the images that are in your website are uploaded to Sia Sky. And then the HTML page, which is like the actual base, we rename all the files to whatever their, Sia, uh, whatever their Sky links are, and then we upload that to Sia Sky. Uh, and since our thing doesn't need any backend, uh, and since we have it hosted on GitHub pages, we can actually just run uh, our web page on itself which will then upload it to Sia Sky. So to make our uh, Sky Pages app even uh, more user friendly, we created a Chrome extension. And this allows you, with the simple click of the Chrome extension, to add the current tab to uh, the Sia network. Um, so it just will. Get, spit out the uh, the link on Skynet, and uh, there you have it, uh, right on the uh, the side network. So moving forward, we'd like to expand this capability to more complex sites using a more robust Chrome extension, and this allows you to access uh, more uh, parts of the DOM. And then uh, we'd like to integrate a uh, web page management system. Uh, into Sky Pages so that you can edit web pages using a maybe drag and drop system and also pay for uh, keeping your website on this, the Skynet. Also, uh, this has potential for integration with uh, blockchain DNS, uh, such as Namebase, 
which is, uses a handshake uh, for a decentralized DNS protocol. Uh, and lastly, uh, we depend on Skynet with these, uh, these URLs, but we'd like to uh, load balance a bit by using uh, like Sci uh, SIA, CDN, and other uh, resolvers. All right, so now we'll just get into a quick demo of it. So this is the uploaded one onto SIA Sky, so it's the same thing. And essentially what we can do is just paste in, uh, get pages URL. Uh, in this case, I'm using a 2048. And it will start importing. So right now it's importing all of the files, all of the uh, JavaScript, any images. And then once that is done, it will rewrite all of the, um, all of the, the resources inside of the HTML file to correspond to all of those. And then this new link has that rewritten HTML. Um, this link will then download the JavaScript else on CDN, and you can play 2048. And that is everything. Any questions? Well, great. Thank you so much, Sky Pages. Next up is ZK UniWallet, who flew uh, all the way from India for, especially for this hackathon, and won the infrastructure prize. Yeah, finally we're on. Uh, hi guys, uh, namaste. Uh, we are Team Sonic. Uh, we came all the way from India to participate in this amazing event, and uh, we are really excited and we are a team of four. Uh, we have got a few blockchain devs and a UX designer and a front-end dev. So thank you, uh, Bitcoin Club, for having us here. We are uh, really uh, like thankful for, to you guys. And you must be excited to know what did we build in this hackathon. So before that, uh, let's get into the problem we are solving for. And it's basically uh, we are building a uni wallet, uh, which is uh, cro cross-platform compatible and uh, you can uh, use it over desktops or web and mobile devices, as well as we are solving uh, KYC issues over zero knowledge concept. And my friends over here uh, will take you to the demo. Sure. So uh, let's look at the demo. And as we know that MetaMask is like a Chrome plugin where uh, we, it cannot catch the transaction based upon the desktop, the apps, right? So we build up a wallet that could easily take up all the transactions from the desktop and as well as, as well as the browser as well. So yeah, so here you can see at the right side is our uh, Panacea wallet. So Panacea is Sanskrit for remedy to everything. So what, what I'll be doing in this demo is I'll be uh, doing a transaction from a web D app and then I'll be going towards a native Python application and I'll be doing a transaction from that and we can sign both of the transaction from one single desktop wallet. And, and it's, it's way secure than signing your crucial transactions from a Chrome plugin. So as you could see that there's the accept thing, and we can check the values. I'll fast forward to the Python plugin. So as you could see, it, it, it does transactions from the, it's accept, it accepts transactions from both the desktop and the browser altogether. Yeah. Uh, so basically the second problem that we tried to solve was of privacy and self-sovereign identity. So uh, like right now how authentication works in Web 2.0 is that all the, all, the, all the websites, so for example, Facebook, they store your salted hash of your passwords. Now, uh, storing the salted hash of your password actually just protects you from uh, external attackers, but they don't, they don't really protect you from internal attackers because internal, internal uh, employees will be able to see your passwords in plain text. And a lot of us do use our passwords for multiple websites. So anyone who is getting a password in plain text can get access to other websites as well. So what we try to do was key if, if we can, instead of sending the password, we can just send a proof that we know a password which corresponds to the sorted hash which is stored on the other side of the website. So uh, we will just show this demo. So over here we are just entering a username and uh, this is a unique identification number and 
when we are generating, uh, instead of sending the password to the website, we'll be sending the sorted hash, which will be stored at the time of registration. And now when we come back for the login part, all we have to do is enter the username and enter the password inside the desktop wallet itself. So this way your password actually never leaves the leaves your PC and and and, and that way like it is much more secure and only a proof is sent, which is you can see like this is a zero knowledge proof. We use Zockets, which uses a prop, uses the basic Pinocchio protocol, ZK Snux. And so even you can verify identity uh, identifiers such as age, and you do not even actually have to enter your age. It actually pulls it from the identity, creates a proof, and send it to the application. So next time when uh, YouTube asks you that are you above 18, we can do much better than just clicking a checkbox. So instead of revealing what is your actual age, you can just send a proof that you are above 18 years of age, and that will get you through. So this is the overall architecture. And my friend would uh, uh, tell you more about the future prospects of our application. Uh, okay, so I'll just tell you about like the impact that we created and what we were aiming for. So uh, basically, we created the like a zero knowledge based platform for like solution to identification and you know verification, uh, like uh, providing a privacy, uh, privacy preser uh, preserving solution for these things. Also, what we create uh, since our product is like uh, you know independent of the uh, it's you know, cross-platform and it's interoperable for different uh, for different like uh, blockchains. So uh, we also provide an SDK. So if uh, so, it's uh, useful for like the DApp developers because uh, now they can save the time uh, they write. You know, they spend writing repetitive code for uh, like making the code compatible. Also, we provide a wallet store which is like a blockchain agnostic. So for the upcoming blockchains, if you know the signature script. And if the blockchain is like EVM comp uh, compatible, so you can like uh, straight away just like uh, transpile it for like any blockchain, which meets these conditions. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Great. Thank you, ZK UniWallet, Sonic, Panacea, all of them. <laughs> Uh, next up, we have Accordo, who won the SDK prize and the Nervos sponsor prize. All right, everybody, I'm Chris, and with my uh, teammate Frank, we created a platform called Accordo. Um, and now the platform, uh, the problem we're looking to solve is that um, many folks out there still don't know what smart contracts are or what a blockchain is. Um, even developers that want to get onboarded into the blockchain space might find some intimidation in terms of like learning what toolkits to use or where to get started. Um, so what we wanted to do is create an educational platform for smart contracts and blockchain tran transactions where you could create smart contracts and transactions using human sentences. Um, so the way we do this is we parse um, uh, input provided by the user and we pull out what they want to do in terms of bootstrapping a smart contract or setting up a new token. Um, so let me go through a demo of that. So very simple. Uh, it's, a, it's a web app where you can discover and create new smart contracts uploaded by other users. Now the way it works is all you need to do is type and say, I want a smart contract named Ocean Token. And what it does is it pulls data from uh, uh, Open Zeppelin, if you folks are familiar with that, um, which is best practices for uh, smart contracts, and parses it into a smart contract in real time from your, from your English entered sentence. Um, so let me see if I can bring up a more complicated example. Um, so now we have, I want a smart contract named Square with 700 tokens with symbol CB and height 800, and it also has a function called cost, which takes a price and amount and returns a total. So <laughs> a lot of stuff there, um, but we're actually parsing it out. And if you see here, we have we pull out the arguments from that sentence into the constructor of the smart contract object, as well as we've created the function, but not actually doing the implementation um, simply from that user's input. And if I copied that sentence several times, it'll just re-render whatever I put in there um, based on that input. And if there's like a problem or they don't use the keywords, we show an error in the, on, on the, on the right-hand side. Um, additionally, you can upload the result. Um, so we're actually leveraging Skynet, and we put 
um, whatever smart contract you just made onto the blockchain and I can view my upload. Uh, we also have an explanation for why we created the smart contract the way we did. Um, and you can actually view this upload. Uh, nope, I just uploaded again. <laughs> but you can view it and you could then just take that starter contract and import it into Remix or some other IDE and continue your work from there. Um, and then lastly, we leverage um, Neveros to be able to send transactions. So if you have a, a Nervos wallet or anything, like you can create a wallet and then you can send your first blockchain transaction using human speech. So that's pretty much a Cordo. So initially you wanna offer it as a freemium web option. Uh, initially the smart contract parsing um, supports certain constructs of solidity, but not all of them, obviously. You can build that in 24 hours. Um, and we're playing to just it's open source and we're planning to like uh, enable you to create contracts and have a freemium model in the future. Uh, we have a timeline, we're probably not gonna stick to this, but uh, we, this would be like the basic pitch in terms of uh, how we could release the product. And that's pretty much a quarter. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Next up, we have Consentus, who won the usability prize. Hey everyone, I'm Sebastian, and the project we worked on this weekend is called Consentus. Um, we're a team that's really passionate about making practical, impactful uses of blockchain technology to help drive adoption. And so with Consentus, we're tackling the problem of um, clinical trial consent collection um, in a process that is really impactful in bringing life-changing drugs to the market. Um, and so what clinical trial consent is, is that at the start of a trial, patients have to give consent to participate. Um, it's meant to be informed consent to demonstrate that they understand what the trial is and how their data is gonna be used. But oftentimes it's kind of like that privacy policy that we scroll past and don't really pay attention to. And what happens is that patients don't see um, really what happens to their data after their participation. Um, at the same time, it's often recorded on centralized systems and even pen and paper a lot of the times, and the data gets lost, and companies have all this really uh, impactful patient data that could be used to make life-changing discoveries, but they don't know whether or not they're allowed to use it because they don't have a robust record of that consent. And so that's where blockchain can come into play and do a much better job of collecting it, recording it, and storing it forever. Yeah, so similar to what Sebastian said this weekend, we wanted to come in with an idea that we could actually make an impact more than just a, like a POC. We wanted to see how blockchain could be applied to like a real world use case and make impact on people. So uh, this, this week our team was Sebastian, uh, myself, uh, Derek, uh, Peter, Costas, and uh, Joe as well. And I'm sure as you know, the, the clinical trial industry is, uh, is no small market. Um, as you can imagine, every single day there's being groundbreaking research in the medical industry, especially right here in Cambridge, where the epicenter of that. So every, day, every year there's over 300,000 clinical trials and that's increasing at, at a 5% rate year over year. So we expect with our solution that you could um, save organizations between 50 to $1,000, which are generally spending um, already for c accepting clinical, uh, clinical trial patient consent data. So we see ourselves as a way to help reduce barriers to entry uh, and, and reduce uh, the audit trails for companies and really increase uh, their data integrity. So our solution at its core uses blockchain-based signatures. This essentially is untamperable proof that a patient has given consent at a certain time for participation in a study, which is exactly what they want. Um, it allows regulators to come in and verify this whenever they want to prove that the pharmaceutical company or clinical trial site is meeting compliance guidelines. Uh, and it also enables patients to have more insight into what their data is being used for, to later revoke it, revoke consent if they find out that their data is being used for something that they're not comfortable with, or even to grant consent to future studies who might find their data useful in the future. Um, and so it can impact in all these areas. And when we're designing this application, we're not designing it for Bitcoin enthusiasts, right? We're designing this for real world patients. Um, and so it has to be super usable. It can't seem like you see hashes everywhere. It can't be like a blockchain application. It's gotta be something that your grandma could use, right? And so from the core, we're focused on building something with really uh, usability, I mean, usability is the prize we want. <laughs> uh, 
um, but it has to be usable, right? Um, and so we built on top of a platform called Amuto, which is actually something that some of us have been working on for the past couple of years. It's a tool that makes things like key pair management, scalability, and deploying blockchain transactions for data verification really easy. And we were able to leverage that to quickly build an application that you know, leverages blockchain but feels like a normal application to the everyday end user. So then with our application this weekend that we built out, there were a few different aspects, a few different roles that we built out. The first being that the, we had the administrative role. Um, that was the user that could create a clinical trial and create a study. Um, then ultimately, they could add patients to a study that would be uh, use, utilized uh, for the clinical trial. And then ultimately upload the forms that these patients would be creating that block base, blockchain-based signature against. And then on the other side, you had the patients who were the ones that were actually partaking in the trial and giving their consent and making these blockchain-based records. And then in the end, they can go back and review these documentations uh, to see if they're still relevant to them and potentially revoke the consent, um, again, making that, that immutable signature along the way uh, to prove that as well. And I don't believe we have time for a demo, but uh, we would be happy to be to address any questions after. So thank you. That's okay. If you want to see a demo, come talk to us. We're happy to show you everything we built. Thank you. Thank you again. Uh, next up, we have Game of Grants, who won the DAB or D5 uh, track. Hello. My name is Iskandar, and this is Timur and Constantine. And our app, Game of Grants, basically seeks to improve the market for academic research. So uh, the, the basic idea behind the app is that uh, researchers, professors, uh, have, uh, sometimes have trouble uh, finding the, the funding for their research. And uh, uh, we believe there are some investors that would like to invest their money in something meaningful. And our application would basically help these two parties meet each other. Um, so uh, we, didn't, we didn't prepare the slides. Our application was so awesome that we just showed the demo. Uh, but uh, yeah, right now it's, it's down already. So uh, yeah, we're just going to talk through it. Uh, the, so our application is basically uh, you're either a researcher or you're, a, you're an, an investor. And you, you come in and you, uh, you can add your proposal. Uh, as an investor, you can add your proposal and say, uh, I'm willing to pay so much money and for this particular cause or this particular area of research. And if you're a professor, you can tell, uh, well, I'm doing research in that. Uh, I need so much money. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, you can, if you, if you come as an investor or a professor, you can, you can uh, search through the different proposals and a request for proposals and choose the one you like and uh, basically professors get paid, investors pay, uh, and this is like a matching process. Uh, this all works uh, behind the scenes, this all uh, would work with, uh, with blockchain, uh, well, blockchain uh, payments, I mean. Uh, we implemented it with Ethereum, uh, um, but this is just because it is uh, widely used, has APIs, and easy, e easy to implement. Uh, so, yeah, and we believe uh, why, there, there was a good question asked in, the first, our, in our first presentation, like why, why do we need uh, blockchain for this? Uh, because uh, we believe that there are, first, there are some, some people who have uh, some amount of capital in, in, in Ethereum or Bitcoin or any other uh, uh, cryptocurrencies, and they would, would, would be willing to spend them. And the second and more important, I think, is that this allows us to facilitate these, uh, these matching process through, uh, through smart contracts. 
uh, which would uh, which would allow uh, secure and reliable uh, well contracts. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we haven't implemented this yet, but in the future we would we would be thinking about uh, making it like uh, there would be a contract and there will be like several miles, milestones uh, at which the the money gets paid uh, once the milestone milestone is reached. So. Yeah, this is this is our idea, and this was our project. Uh, thank you so much. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get through our demo quickly. Um, as Derek had mentioned, our application needs to support two kinds of users: people working at clinical trial sites, which we consider to be like administrator users, and then obviously the patients who are coming to participate in a clinical trial. And so we have a couple of sample accounts to walk through that process. Um, so first, we can start with an administrative user who might be starting a new clinical study. And obviously, they're signing in with just an email and password. All of the complicated blockchain mechanisms are built in under the hood, so it's not some kind of foreign concept to your average user. And our server's a little slow to boot up sometimes, so this first login can be a little painful. Blame Heroku for that one. <laughs> so, so the admin, um, in this case, someone operating from a little trial site, has a dashboard, and they can go in and create a new trial. Um, in this, let's say they're doing some cancer research, and this would be a consent form. And we do have an example. This is an informed consent for uh, gastric cancer surgery. And they can drop the file in. And let's say MIT is sponsoring the study. They could add that bit of information and go ahead and submit. And they could then be prompted. Some patients have already accounts in the platform. We could go in and say, we want to request consent from these patients to participate in the study. Simple as that. And so this user would then log out. A patient would come in, and a patient has their own account. And blocked by my typing speed. So now the patient can log in. Again, everything's handled under the hood. They can go and view, say, the agreement for consent. Um, we had a hard time getting the, the PDF to view right in page uh, at the last minute, but take our word for it. Um, they can go consent to the terms of the study agree to the conditions as given above, um, and submit a form. What happens under the hood is that they're actually signing, digitally signing the PDF, and that gets published to a blockchain network so that it can be verified um, untamperably with an accurate timestamp and associated with them. And they're given a hash as proof of that transaction. And that's the core process. Thank you. Uh, so this is our demo, uh, kind of a landing page. Uh, well, description of our project, I already told you that. Here you can choose uh, to be a researcher or an investor. Uh, here you can see different proposals. Well, you can see that uh, these are very rough kind of drafts. But uh, here, what you can see actually is like the topic uh, the amount of money requested, and then the name, and uh, this is, uh, all right. Okay, we're back. Uh, oh, I, I'm afraid to touch it now. Okay, so and this is the uh, this is basically the the wallet uh, address, uh, which could be used to, which could be used to send the money. And um, in theory, we would do just, come on. We would do this pay button. Hold this, okay. I'm gonna be holding this. All right, so, and we can press this pay button and the payment will go uh, get verification here. This is an um, ex extension called, a uh, Chrome extension called MetaMask. Um, here you, you would log in, here we have 
we have our uh, uh, like uh, our, our small uh, own uh, Ethereum network running, and yeah, this is our testing network. Here you can just add a proposal. Uh, yeah, but the main functionality is of course here, and uh, I'm holding it. Okay, so and here we have these like uh, conditions for smart contracts. This is just a picture for now, uh, but yeah. All right, I'll, I'll finish it. You get the idea. <laughs> Thank you so much.